What crazy ass story do you need to tell? I got a pilot's license and flew across the country smuggling marijuana four times and then stopped. Now I work a normal job and I can't tell anyone about the coolest dumbest thing I've ever done. A little while back my roommate was contacted by a wealthy man in the area who wanted to pay her to be his live-in pet for an entire month. She thought that this was a cutesy way of saying that it was a sugar daddy baby arrangement. Turns out what he actually meant was that she would be given room. Board and a very healthy allowance to spend a large portion of her day dressed as a cat. Walking on her hands and knees. Eating out of a bowl. Using a litter box and... Yes. Sleeping in a little cage at night. SX wasn't even on the table. He was only interested in having a human cat for a month. She seriously considered the offer for a weekend. And then politely declined. Edit. This allowance would have covered her college tuition for the semester. He knew what he wanted and was very motivated. When I was learning to fly at a sketchy flight school. I was doing a pre-fly check flight, close to the end of the program. I was doing the run up in a Cessna. When I smelled something. Do you smell that? Smells like gas I say. Instructor, 21 YO, shrugs. Annoyed. I open the door. And there is a spreading puddle of gas under the plane. T. The instructor panics stay in the plane. I'll get help. And runs off. As soon as I got the engine off. I noped out of there. And watched the plane dump all its fuel on the runway. They kindly gave me another plane. An instructor. They fixed their plane. And a month later. I read about the same plane crashing, due to fuel issues. One fatality. Years ago I was hitchhiking north of Richmond, Virginia when a car with two dudes picked me up. We got to chatting and it turns out they were headed to their friend's place to shoot guns and asked me if I wanted to join. I asked if his friend would be okay with a random homeless-esque fellow shooting his guns and he said hell. Just pretend to be my cousin from Seattle. So instead of sitting on the highway in 100 degree weather I spent an afternoon eating hamburgers. Shooting guns. And blowing shti up with bags of tannerite on some random dot employees woodland property. Don't remember your name dude. But you were the man. Thanks for a great memory. I stole my own car back once. I used to restore classic cars. I had the most valuable one I've ever had at a body shop. And he took forever to finish it. He had painted other cars for me. But apparently developed a drug problem. I would check on the car every week to see if there was any progress. Finally. After a year he told me he painted 90% of it. But he's asking for more money than we originally agreed. I drive there on a Friday afternoon unannounced. And see my car outside the shop. Worth a ton of money. With the shop owner nowhere in sight. His neighbor told me he had left the car outside for 3 days and several people have tried to steal it. So I call a tow truck and tow it to my garage right away. On my home the shop owner calls me over and over again. He thought somebody stole the car. He kept calling me for months. I never responded. Don't know how interesting it is. But a few years ago I'd go to college in the morning and leave at like midnight because I didn't have a PC and needed to work on homework at school. One time on the last train ride home, I had to catch two trains and two buses each way to get there and back. We were coming into the last station where I'd get off. There was this Asian guy acting a bit strange the whole ride. He gets up and stands in the middle of the car and as the train breaks coming into the station he falls flat on his face from a full standing position. Lays there until the train stops. Stands up. Dusts himself off and walks out of the open doors like nothing happened. I saw this guy doing it like 5 other separate times and since I was used to it at that point I enjoyed looking out for the uninitiated riders reactions. Plenty more slightly weird stuff happened on my late night subway rides home. I really enjoyed the entertainment. I've never stolen that cat. I'm actually allergic to cats so I can't even have a cat. Despite this I've been accused of stealing three separate cats on three separate occasions by three different people. One guy threatened to shoot me for stealing his cat but I didn't steal his cat. 
Now that was a wild thanksgiving. Was picking up sticks around my parents house with my brother. Threw a stick on the pile when one of the little branches pierces my inner forearm through and through. I look down befuddled not knowing what the hell to do. Tried pulling it out but the skin moved too much. Finally got the balls to give a big yank. And out it came. Surprisingly not out of blood from the holes. Me and my friend were bored and decided to go skating at like 1am and ended up in a car park. We started talking about all scary stories and stuff when out of nowhere we notice a fireball in the sky. We stop speaking and watch in amazement and shock about what we are witnessing until all light we could see suddenly go out and the fireball was gone. I don't think either of us have ran so fast in our lives. Many many years ago in Galveston, Texas I was attending the Kappa Beach party. I'll get to the point. After an hour of being in the crunk area I looked over to a woman holding her child in one arm and blowing two dudes with the other arm. And mouth. Good night friends. Edit. Don't let Galveston keep you from visiting Texas or Houston for that matter. I love my home. One time my girlfriend and her friend. Let's call her Molly. Are hanging out and order a pizza. Their other friend. Let's call her Anne. Was coming over shortly. It was snowing out. With about an inch of fresh coverage on the ground. The pizza arrives. And about 20 minutes later. So does Anne. Anne comes in and is like sweet I'm just in time. My girlfriend and Molly are like what do you mean the pizza got here like 20 minutes ago. Anne says no. I just saw the driver leave. They are immediately spooked and go outside where they find footprints in the snow all around the back section of the house, where their apartment was located, with patches below and around windows where the guy had clearly stood for a while. When he dropped off the pizza he was being normal but asking what they were up to. If they were hanging with their boyfriends. Etc. They were high and just sketched out so didn't get cops involved. What a creep. How I met my significant other, on a plane. Flying Bangkok to Doha. I was downgraded when my better seat upgrade fell through. Got sat in the third to last row. Hit it off with the Spanish girl next to me. Three weeks later on a whim I flew from the states to Spain to meet her. Three weeks after that I moved there. Just hit our two year anniversary and are celebrating the birth of our first child. My parents are blind optimists. They think nothing bad will happen to anyone in our family. One day I got jumped by some losers in a gang. I go home and tell my parents and they look at me and say. Well. There's fried chicken in the oven. Unbelievable. I was 14. Edit. You are all amazing people for reading my comment and caring about it enough to upvote it. I really am appreciative and astounded. Read that as blind optometrists were super confused. One time when I was in gym class when I was 11-ish. I was repeatedly squatting on top of my friend while singing Pedatobies as a joke. He said. Stop. I'm getting a boner. Comma. In English. Even though we live in Norway and English is his second language. I said. Sorry. Did I break your rib or something? Comma. Thinking yeesh. This guy must be brittle. Full stop. He said. No. Bona means your dick is hard. Full stop. He then proceeded to stop. And that's how I learned the word bona. There was a politician that hit on my brother's girlfriend way back. Tried to cheat on his wife with my brother's girlfriend. He's like 40 and she's like 21. My brother always hated that guy. He was in power like for 20 years. My dad campaigned for the candidate that beat him. Went door to door for like weeks. The candidate never would have won if it wasn't for dad. Won by like 30 votes. Dad never knew about the incident involving my brother. It felt like sweet revenge. Just got home from a holiday in Bali. Happened to find a new tattoo on my leg. It's the Wi-Fi password for our villa. Semicolon. During summer vacation in 2000 when I was alone at home playing video games. I had this stranger knock on my door asking for an address. While I told him that I do not know of the address he was looking for. 
he asked me for a glass of water. Being the naive idiot that I am at that time. I was 11 at the time. I left the door open and went into the kitchen to get it. The guy then proceeded to invite himself in and locked the door. Over the next 2 hours I sat there looking scared and dumb while he showed me a knife and searched my place for anything valuable he can carry in broad daylight without suspicion. However finding nothing he left. All the time I was scared to death as to how to explain to my mom as to what happened to my video game had he taken it. Since she told me not to open doors to strangers. I just found out last week that my manager snorts cocaine. She never came off as the kind of person who would do it. But yep. 30 year old mom snorting coke. I can't tell anyone I know because I don't want to get her fired. But goddamn I need to tell someone this crazy shti. Edit. I mean the fact that it's her of all people who's doing it. Not the fact that I work with someone who snorts cocaine. I'm from Hong Kong. And still under 20 years old right now. Four years ago I was a host family of an exchange student from Italy. Then two years ago me and my family went to Italy and visited her hometown. She then showed me to a local church. Seeing that we are the first Chinese that visited the place. The church decided to show us a mysterious book that they discovered. I took a look and found out instantly that it was a Chinese Bible. The church stated that the book was found in the 15th century. After an earthquake. However after I took a photo of it, which they allowed, and did some research with my friend. It was actually printed in Hong Kong in 1865. There was also no earthquakes at the church after the year. About 3 years ago. After high school. Me and 3 friends went trekking in Iceland. We decided to splurge and treat ourselves to an Airbnb in the city for the weekend. We had been camping all week. And ended up in an apartment that was nice. But had some really shady. Scary and messed up paintings. There was a locked room that wasn't opened until the last day of our trip. When two friends went to return a tent we had borrowed from the host. He wasn't home. But his girlfriend was. And I guess didn't understand that she shouldn't have left her boyfriend's Nazi Hitler room wide open, especially after hosting four Jews. We're talking swastikas. Hitler portraits. Books. Flags. Everything. Somehow the girls managed to take some pictures before running the FCK out of there. One night a guy comes into my work with his missus in tow. He's screaming about how that's his missus and he'll beat the shti out of her because that's his property and he'll do what he likes. A pack of huge Maori guys heard this guy talking shti and decided to teach him a lesson. They started beating the shti out of the guy in the middle of the store. It went from the liquor department. Into the bakery area. Into the food prep area and back out into the store. It had to have lasted 5 minutes at least and staff were hiding wherever they could. By the time the Maori guys were done. The other guy was covered in blood. With a huge gash in his head. The Maori guys left after that and the other guy ended up dragging himself out of the store. I doubt he touched his missus after that. When I was 7 I was taking a shti. Then for some reason an earthquake happened. I ran out of the toilet naked while dropping my shti from my ass all over the house because I was panicking too hard. Last year I drove to Las Vegas with the intention of working a music festival. Then parking my car a friend's house and flying to Oakland after. There I'd rent a car. Then drive to Napa to work another one. Then fly back to Vegas and drive back to LA. I missed my flight to Oakland by 20 minutes. My car had a major issue and I had to find a last minute mechanic that could take it. There were no more flights to the region that day. So I flew to Fresno. Took a lift to Amtrak. Took the 3 hour trip to Oakland. Called an Uber. Picked up my car, it was a Turo rental. And then drove to Napa. Made it to Napa at 1am. Started work at 9 the next day. I need to tell the story about a meal that I ate. I need to tell this story to my comp 1 professor. In 1200 words or more. By today at 0930, it's 0259 at the time of writing this. I have around about 400 words of the story written. It's a bullshit descriptive essay. The issue is that I can't stop procrastinating. 
I'm sitting here at my computer. Hyped up on Red Bull. Sitting with the prompt in front of me. And yet I cannot force myself to write. I lack the self-discipline to do things that I don't want to do. If I can't turn it into a rose-colored candy parade. I can't do it. I need to pass this class, which means getting a passing grade on this essay, to avoid being booted out of my community college. If I get booted out of my community college. My dad, who said that he'd pay my living expenses while I'm in school, might stop paying those expenses. I'm 11 stroke 10 stressed out about it. Dude you can do it. Just start with an outline or something and hang this out. You can do it. I was once on the bus on my way home and this big bloke comes storming down to the front of the bus. He then plants himself down and he proceeds to pull a raw Sainsbury's pizza out of his bag. He then eats the entire thing. Including the uncooked dough. I accidentally set my friend up on a prom date with the daughter of Montel Williams when we were in high school. I lived on a big property. I grew way down the back fence. We had sheep. I came home and my four shoulder height plants are gone. All of the sheep are passed out on the back porch. I have 15 minutes to get all these sheep down the back behind the shed before mum gets home. I load these efkas on the lawnmower trailer one at a time. Mum gets home doesn't notice a thing. Two weeks later my mum asks me what happened to my plants out the back. Did the sheep eat them? I said yes. She laughs. When I was 19. I would deliver drugs for a friend of mine. One of the guys I delivered weed to worked at the local zoo. One day we decided to smoke up in the somewhat hidden area behind the indoor penguin enclosure. After the set we went inside to find the penguins acting very weird. Turns out we were smoking right next to the air intake for said penguin enclosure. And that was the day I accidentally hotboxed some penguins. This story is complex and is unusually long because it's connected with a bunch of other crazy stories. But in short. A substantial amount of people believe my, very much alive, grandpa is Jim Morrison. There isn't a whole lot to disprove the conspiracy. But it's also hard to try and prove it. I'm not sure if it's real or not. But trying to research my family or come up with facts is a hell of a rabbit hole. When I was 19-20ish. I was waiting for a bus when a well-spoken man in his 60s began chatting to me. I awkwardly nodded and smiled like the gangly moron that L was. And he eventually got onto the subject of he and his wife hosting dinners and how I should definitely come around some time. I got more and more awkward anxious as the conversation went on. And he eventually started complimenting me on my shirt. Reached out to stroke the fabric and then reached between the buttons to stroke my stomach. In the street. At a public bus stop. I got on the next, wrong, bus. Rode a few stops to gather my thoughts and then made my way home. The icing on the cake? He looked just like Ian McDermid. Palpatine tried to touch me up. I was going fishing with some friends at a small neighborhood pond. And decided to feel the water with my hand. Not quite sure why I did it. But it was nice so I splished around in the water for a few more minutes. So there I am. Sitting at the edge of the water. And suddenly this huge slimy mass glides against my palm. Out of instinct. I grabbed it. And pulled the biggest base I had ever seen out of the water, in retrospect. It couldn't have been more than 5 or 6 pounds. From the perspective of my friends. It looked like I was feeling around the water for a fish. And then being able to yeet the catch of the day out of the water with nothing but bare hands and skill like a badass. I visited a friend in a town nearby for the first time. Since we both smoke I suggested to go pick up some weed. He assured me that his guy has the best shti in town. Long story short. I once shared a tapanaki table with the former dictator of Bangladesh. MD Ershad. So this literally just happens a few hours ago while I was working at a hospital emergency department. A guy brings his friend in through the registration area because of a opiate overdose. Security beings them back to a room on a cot. The dude is blue in the face and not breathing at all on his own. We move him to the room's bed and few nurses and the doctor walk in. 
I, a paramedic, am starting an IV and I hear one of the nurses says. What is the very large and round object in his pants? Nurse processes to start taking his pants off and to our surprise the dude had a frozen potato in a plastic bag sitting on his penis. Never have I even seen anything like that in my 5 year career and I never expect to see it again.